The road to Super Bowl 57 starts today, and if you want the Browns to be in the Super Bowl next year, which I really hope you do, or else I don't know why you're watching today's video, then go ahead and hit that like button because you know what? I can't guarantee if you like the video the Browns will make the Super Bowl next year. But why leave it up to chance? Why, why not just like it right now? That way, next playoffs, you're like, you know what? Thank God I liked that one video last February. So hit that thumbs up icon to start today's show. What's going on, Browns fans? We got a lot of talking points today on the show. We're going to touch on some Odell Beckham Jr. stuff because I don't really want to talk about him, but I feel like if I don't bring him up, I'm ignoring the elephant in the room after the Super Bowl last night. Bleach Report dropped a three-round mock draft, so we'll see who they have the Browns taking in that. And then we'll wrap up the video by looking at some potential free agents the Browns could sign coming off the two Super Bowl teams and a familiar face, by the way, so make sure you stay tuned for that. First, though, Let's talk about OBJ. I don't really want to spend much time on the show about talking about OBJ, but I feel like if we don't bring him up, we're missing a lot of uh, the Twitter circles that have been spinning around lately for the Browns. So, of course, we all know OBJ went with the Rams and then went out to the Super Bowl, yada, yada, yada. Here's my kind of final sense on this. One, I really hope we're done with this saga because... It's not fun to talk about anymore, all right? Both sides are the losing side coming out of this. Actually, scratch that. The OBJ did not come out as a loser from this. He won his Super Bowl with the Rams. And I've got some notes here. So first thing I want to touch on, there's a lot of speculation that the Brown or OBJ was a cancer to the locker room and the Browns wanted to move on from him because of the detriment he was bringing to the locker room. I don't buy that. Browns players love the guy. They were tweeting out support for him throughout the game last night, so don't feed me that crap. There is some blame to go around on both sides here, but ultimately I think more blame falls on the Browns. You're paying a guy over $15 million to be a top-tier wide receiver, and you clearly were not using him to his full potential like the Rams did immediately when he went over there. Went from five touchdowns with the – zero touchdowns with the Browns to five with the Rams including a Super Bowl touchdown. So the Browns were more to blame, but it's not like OBJ has no hand in this whatsoever, all right? I, he talked about how when the video came out, uh, his dad dropped uh, Baker Mayfield missing him. He was asleep, and he didn't even know what happened. Dude, come on. It's your dad. I bet you two cooked this thing up and plotted it all out, and it worked to perfection. You got released. You got to go to the team you wanted to go to. But I'm not going to listen to this uh, nonsense that OBJ had no idea that this video was coming out. Don't don't say that to me. So OBJ, before the NFL, before the Super Bowl, spoke to a podcast over at PFT. And here's what he said. Here's the quote. One of the biggest regrets that I have about the way things ended is I just didn't get. It's like having a breakup, but there really was no closure. And it's kind of just like you go, that's just it. One thing I've always been big on in my life is closure because I feel like if doors are not closed, they're always still open. Just having to leave, leave these guys that are your brothers, you have a lifetime friendship with, and it just happened so abruptly. <sighs> like, yes, I, like, oh, I don't know. So the, my final thoughts on this, and then I want to move on because this, like, this show shouldn't be not be about OBJ. This show should be about the Browns, and OBJ is not on the Browns, but yet Cleveland media still keeps forcing it down our throat that – the OBJ is to blame for the Browns season. No, don't give me that. Come on, okay? OBJ sure is not blameless in this, but I think the biggest culprits are the Cleveland Browns who could not utilize him properly. Who's more to blame, though, you think? Obe Odo Beckham Jr. or the Cleveland Browns? If you think it's OBJ, spam OBJ down below. If you think it's the Browns, type CLE for the Cleveland Browns. I, I think it's the Cleveland Browns. You had a $15 million wide receiver, and you didn't use him correctly, and then you saw the Rams use him correctly and go to the Super Bowl. I think that's all that really has to be said. Now, let's get to a more fun segment of the show, right? Let's raise some spirits up here. Let's look at the latest Bleacher Report mock draft. They dropped a three-round mock draft and a different wide receiver. Surprise, surprise, like the worst-kept secret right now. The Browns are going to pick a wide receiver in round one. They have the Browns selecting Chris Olave out of Ohio State. So he just drives up from Columbus to Cleveland. Now let's talk about Olave. He's a well-rounded route runner with phenomenal speed. That's probably his greatest attribute. And he actually is in the right, he's being drafted at the right time. Look at Cooper Cup, for example. Just won Super Bowl MVP. 
He was a triple crown winner, and he's not this Calvin Johnson, big guy, deep threat. He can go up and climb a tree in the end zone and come down with a touchdown kind of player. He's got great speed, and he is the best best route runner in the NFL, and that's kind of a lot in a lot of ways. He fits that current trend. Now his size is six foot one, buck ninety, so average size, but his strength he doesn't wow you with his blocking in the run game or his ability when he faces press coverage to beat his guy and get off the line of scrimmage if he's facing man to man right at you know bump and run right at the get go. But Alave this year for the Buckeyes, if you. All right, Buckeye fan, which, you know, good chance you are if you're a Browns fan. You know what a great and special and talented player Chris Olave is. Nearly got to 1,000 yards with a very crowded wide receiver room and put up 13 touchdowns. And the average, I think that really sums up Chris Olave. For nearly 15 yards per reception, he can be a monster after the catch. So that's the Browns' first pick in the latest mock draft out of Bleacher Report. Grade the pick for me, A, B, C, D, or F. Chris Olave to me, I would not think he's a 13th overall pick just because I don't know if I have a great reason for it, but it's mostly because I just like other guys more. I like Garrett Wilson and Jamison Williams and Traylon Burks a little bit more, but if the Browns end up picking Olave, I won't have any big issues with it. I'll give it a B plus. Let me know what you think down below. And also, if you want more Browns mock drafts, because we are in mock draft season, we are the capital of Cleveland Browns mock drafts here at the Browns Report, then hit that big red button, subscribe to the channel. I love mock drafts, and if you love mock drafts too, this is the perfect place for you. So make sure you join us here to stay up to date with the latest Browns mock drafts as I get that out. Other wide receivers taken in Bleacher Report's mock draft. They had Drake London being the first guy off the board to the Giants at number seven. Then, of course, Olave to the Browns. Jamison Williams falls to the Saints, 18th overall. Then goes Traylon Burks at number 21 to the Patriots. Jahan Dotson, number 25, maybe pairing up with Stephon Diggs in Buffalo. Garrett Wilson falls mightily in this mock draft, all the way to Tennessee at number 26. I bet the Titans would love that in their mock draft uh, dreams. And then Justin Ross out of Clemson, he rounds it out with the Detroit Lions via the L.A. Rams after that Jared Goff-Matthew Stafford swap at number 32. For me, I come back to the same three names. Jamison Williams, Garrett Wilson, and Traylon Burks. Those are my three top guys. I do like Drake London a lot. Um, I, I just like these guys more, and, and that's kind of this draft class, right? It's not that one guy is so much better than the other. If you have him ranked fourth, you have some major issues with his gameplay. No, it's just I like three guys more than those guys, and that's kind of how loaded this wide receiver class is, and that's why I think it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for the Browns to go wide receiver in round one, wide receiver in round two. There's that much depth in this class. We'll look at round two in a moment, but first, guys, it is Valentine's Day as I film this right now, and if you have not gotten your loved ones some swag for Valentine's Day, do it at Fanatics. Go to chatsports.com slash brownscupid. I got that link in the comments and the description of the video. It's 25% off. Listen, I personally did not make a reservation for Valentine's Day until like a week ago, and now we're dining at Chipotle, a local Mexican restaurant. Maybe you've heard of it. So don't be like me. Don't be a schmuck. Go out and get your girl some Valentine's Day swag at chatsports.com slash brownscupid. All right, let's look at the Browns' second-round mock drafts. We have Chris Olave round one. Round number two is Fedarian Mathis, the defensive tackle out of Alabama. This fills the second biggest need for Cleveland, in my opinion, after wide receiver. You go out and you get a run stopper. You get Fedari Mathis, who had nine sacks, 12 tackles, four loss for the Crimson Tide. He's probably the third um, D tackle on most big boards behind Jordan Davis and Wyatt out of Georgia. And then you land at Fedari Mathis, who... Look how much bigger he is than Stetson Bennett right there. I mean, he's a massive guy. So that's what they have Cleveland selecting in round number two. Then Bleacher Report in round number three has the Browns going tight end with Kate Oden. So did some homework on this guy because, hands up, I did not watch Washington Huskies football religiously this past college football year. Yeah, Pac-12 after dark. So round number three, the Browns get another wide receiver, another tight end, because good chance that David Njoku does not come back next year as he hits free agency. You want to fill that void. You know Baker loves tight ends. The Browns do very well when they work out of heavy tight end packages. Kate Oden, here's the thing with tight ends. 
very difficult to evaluate them in college because very few college offensive schemes are designed to benefit tight ends. So you look at those numbers, 250 yards and one touchdown, what are we doing here? Well, tight ends, is to me, is kind of like when you draft in the NBA a 18-year-old freshman. You are drafting for the raw potential. You're seeing the little spurts they get and the opportunities they have and how well they make the most out of them, right? How well of a blocker they are, and when they do get targets, what kind of hands do they have, how good of a route runner, when they do get the opportunity to have that ball fed to them. So that is the latest Browns mock draft coming out of Bleacher Report. Let me know what you think about those picks in the comment section below. Next up on the show, let's talk about the latest top free agent targets coming out of the Super Bowl. So we'll only look at the two Super Bowl teams, the Rams and the Bengals. I got two guys, one from each team. One's a familiar name. It is the Cincinnati Bengals defensive tackle and former Cleveland Brown, Larry Ogunjobi. Oh, let's try that over. Larry Ogunjobi. He was the Browns' third-round pick in 2017, and I, lo I liked him a lot. I missed him this year. It was probably a miss by Andrew Barry, letting Ogunjobi walk so you could go with Andrew Billings, swapping DTs from Cincinnati, and the Bengals won that transaction. There's no doubt about that. He signed a one-year $6.2 million contract, and he had seven sacks this year. He had his career year. His best with Cleveland was five-and-a-half sacks. So maybe bring him back to Cleveland. I would love to see that happen. He would love to get paid. So why not reunite the Browns with their former third-round pick? Let me know what you think, though. Do you want the Browns to bring Ogan Joby back? I love his name. Kind of sounds like a Star Wars uh, Jedi name, in my opinion. So, yeah, let's get the lightsaber. Let's get the Force back with Cleveland. Why for yes and for no. On the Rams side of things, how about another D-tackle? Sebastian Joseph Day. Former six-round pick out of Rutgers, and you don't really see a six-round pick make that much of an impact early in their career. Not the case for this guy. Through three years, he started 38 games, and only missed. Uh, he would have started more than that if he didn't go on IR midway through the season with a chest injury after week seven. And he was very good for the Rams up until week seven. We'll show you his stats in a little bit. But here's my thought, though. If the Browns go heavy de defensive tackle in free agency, maybe, sorry, just maybe, that could free up that spot for them in the NFL draft, and they don't have to go draft a defensive tackle like Mathis in the second round if they sign these two guys, and then they go can go back-to-back -back wide receivers. Three sacks for him in a very small sample size this year because he did get hurt after week seven, played in the Super Bowl, came off IR, but three sacks in seven games for a guy in the interior defensive line? Yeah, I'll take that. Also, a little funny here, yeah, a little funny guy, the Cleveland Rams are back because there's been a bit of a connection now between the LA Rams and the Cleveland Browns. Of course, OBJ, but they're a little deeper than that. If they went out and got Joseph Day, that would be the latest of a handful of guys to come over from LA, right? John Johnson and Troy Hill also came over from the Rams last offseason, so, last offseason, so... Cleveland Rams, back in the 30s and 40s, they are returning today. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us here on the Cleveland Browns Report. Make sure you check out that awesome deal at Fanatics and hit that big red button and subscribe.